a Maximus. Goodness me, an LDV Maximus. This was LDV's attempt to try and modernise what was a, a very ageing, well, freight rover platform essentially. And they did it themselves with a little bit of help, but it wasn't brilliant. And uh, this transit, uh, very, very tall transit, which is starting, I imagine, to look something like a, yes, yeah, a part shop. Um, sad. Can't even see inside. It's that. It's that far gone. Doors and boots. Ford Focus, Mondeo, Fiat. Oh goodness me! There's a, the, the collections over there. Zafira 1.6 on a 54 plate. It's a life model. <laughs> No, maybe not. There'll be an avalanche in a second of parts coming out. That's a golf match on a 53 plate. Oh, we have an Escort. Yes, an Escort on an S Reg, but it's a gear. It's a gear. Oh, yes. Look at the. Oh, it's even crying. That takes a lot of doing. So we have a look. If I remember how to do this. Oh yes, we have a ZTEC lump. Buried away. As I say, fuel, spark, and that will start. Because they just do. Power steering wedged between the engine and the coolant bottle. Yeah, you could tell that power steam was a bit of an, um, a, a, a late on additional feature, really. Although it was standard for most of uh, Escort Mark V and Mark VI era. Um, well, the battery air hasn't completely deroded. And um, yeah, just uh, unfortunately nature has taken its course with a lot of this stuff. Yeah, nasty. Okay. Oh my God, it's actually, no, it's a free door. It's a free door. Oh, goodness me. Okay, this is, uh, this is really nice. Oh dear. Oh dear, there's nothing left. I think the algae has become the bodywork. Yeah, oh dear. Sad ending for this car. Um, let me just see if I can get in. No, I think this car is locked. I think they locked it ages ago. Um, but this is a gear, so a free, I presume it's a gear. I presume if it's got the wrong... Oh, excuse me. Right, I'm gonna just film from this distance. I'm not gonna get too close because it's really sickness related. I mean, that steering wheel tells it all. Those seats are going to need some serious cleaning, but they are salvageable. And I hope that as many parts can be taken off this as possible um, to help other escorts. And um, we've got a golf match here who I think it's in a similar sort of condition. Oh, God, no, 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 no. Um, oh, we've got a Volvo here. Yes, we have. Oh, it seems to be, oh God, I don't like that. Yeah, there's a bit of a verge going on there. Oh my God. Yeah, it's definitely returning to the earth. <laughs> um, there's nothing really, there's more green than actually engine in this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We have a Focus Mark 1 at last. So this has been here a long time. So it's a 53 plate um, ZTEC um, with some, with, what the heck are these? They've got a Ford center cap on them, but what is that? That's not a Mark 1 wheel. I've not seen them, not even uh, accessories, uh, protected by toad security. Smells like every other Mark 1 Focus with a hint of mold. Got some seats. And some lashings of mold. Think of all the people that use that radio. Oh, sad, 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 sad. Um, 
Yeah, it's the estate version, therefore the workhorse. Um, 1.6, very nice indeed. Unfortunately, I don't think I... Ooh. Well, that's possibly why, but uh, it's been parked up on grass for many years. Um, but let's have a look at how much of the engine is intact. It's not too bad in here, actually. It's um, it's quite dirty, but a bit oily around the plugs. Oh, water just gets in there. Um, but oh, very sad, very sad. Um, it looks like it had a replacement alternator before it was scrapped. And... Oh, this is very rare. This is very rare. It's got no air conditioning because you see that rusty pipe going all the way across. It's the power steering. That's how bad those pipes can go. I'm very concerned about, I'm concerned about mine, so I might want to get a spare one, but I don't think it's going to be this one. But this is a non-air conditioning model. Oh. And it is a manual. It is a manual. I was just checking it wasn't an automatic then. Um, well, I, I could tell it wasn't. Obviously, I could see the gear. I can't see the gearbox. Um, Peugeot expert. <coughs> Look at that. I'll tell you what, let me just get through these. careful where I've put my feet. Wings, if you need a wing off, there's so many wings here, I, I can't really tell you what's what because Ford's Vauxhalls and all the usual generic common cut. Oh, we have a 45. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just come over this side. If it isn't part two already, it might be part three, but at this stage, um, just keep following me. I might lose a bit of sound in a second, so, uh, uh, I might revert to normal microphoning because this is the battery's wearing out. Too so much filming here. There's so many cars uh, on this site, but we have come to the back of it. So we have an 06 plate, 45. They were some of them are registered really, really late. It's had some replacement door um, handles because yeah, that's what happens. Um, it is a ZS. Um, I thought it was a I thought it was a ZS, judging by the boot. But anyway, I names dropped that one. Um, oh, how sad! I can't even get to that side of the car um, because of the, the degradation. But um, I'm sure if I can just pull, there we go. Oh, that's sad. Never mind. Never mind. But, um, I wonder if I can just pop that up there without smashing anything. Can I? Okay, guys, I've had to revert to speaking on a voice recording. Yet, yeah, most of this Rover K series is completely untouched. There's very few bits apart from the airbox that are missing. It's ridiculous. It's a real shame to see that. So, I just shut the bonnet down. Yeah. Bit of a shame that one. I think there's a there's a lot of bar parts on that ZS that could be used, and um, I hope some people watch this video and hopefully be aware it's there. Um, this is fantastic. Um, apparently, this is one of the cars that has actually been brought in, and it's possibly up for sale. Somebody actually made an offer uh, to the owner for this limousine. I mean, look at that. I mean, look how thick that is. That's one thick bulkhead area i mean it's a very sad car because the time that people actually sit in this car it's a very sad day but it's a beautiful interior is it not uh, it's nice to see one where i'm actually at someone's funeral uh, for a change and um the, the leather is of such a high quality it's untrue i mean you know look how thick the back of the seats are and how much leg room you get i mean the, even everything down to the carpets is high high quality um, with a low torquey engine, um, it produces a, it's almost silent in the cabin. I think the sound deafening in those cars will be unbelievable. A really nice spot, and I kind of wonder would that make a daily driver? I think that's what I was thinking at the same time. Uh, and it is made by Eagle. I'm not sure what company that is, but you know, 
interesting enough. Um, <coughs> let me have a look through here. And um, yeah, consider the, the feasibility at this point. Would it be a mad purchase? I mean, why not? I mean, think of all the sad people that have been in that car, but that car could be a quite happy car if you really wanted it to be. I mean, it is a Daimler. Um, so uh, it says, hello. Uh, yep, yep, got lots of people in the back there. Um, lots of space. Um, definitely one for taking the family out, interestingly. Um, that will get some looks wherever you go. And he's a Daimler V8. It's just a Jaguar V8, just with Daimler written on it. Um, I'm not interested in that. Mercedes sitting over there. Um, well, a few Mercedes in the actual scrapyard. Very few of them uh, were here. But um, I'll tell you what, you come in here and you look at the interior. Look, I mean, look at the sides of the seats. That is something else. Um, you can imagine why that's been taken to the scrapyard because the electrical issues on these cars are something else. Um, and there's just more doors. I mean, how many doors do you want, really? It's, it was just an avalanche at the back end. Half the doors are covered by earth. A lovely Citroen Picasso. Um, remember the adverts of these back in the day with the, the robots that go swish? Um... Then we got Vauxhall Corsa, um, not not very, not very interesting at all. And right at the back, uh, a Golf Mark Six, very strangely enough, um, bit of a random car to have right at the back. I think some of these that the cars in this line are certainly newer. And I've just discovered there's a heck of a lot of cars at the back of all this, um, so I'm traipsing all the way to the front without actually being attacked uh, by brambles. Right, I've just had to revert to normal sound here. We've got a Fiesta Mark IV, so I, sorry for the sound, might have cut out. Uh, unfortunately, my Rode Wireless has decided to yeah, pack up um, battery. This is such a long episode, I'm not surprised. Um, oh, God, we've got some really nasty scabbiness down there. And uh, there's actually nothing left of the interior to talk to you about, so... Oh, yes, well, we've got the... Uh, the Ford Endura E, which is the Kent engine, They're the last variation of this engine, and uh, it's very familiar to pretty much everyone. And uh, they gave it some uh, very unique uh, inlet manifold. They did a lot of work to make that engine pass emissions all the way to 2002, and this would have been one of the last ones. I mean, they did make them to 02, which is uh, fascinating. So. Uh, yeah, still a lot of parts for to use, and that cam cover looks actually really nice. That can clean up nicely. They usually go crispy and scabby. Next to a Ford Galaxy, which um, feels on top of the Galaxy at the moment because we've got all these down here. So, and then we've got another 206 with no rear suspension by the look of it. Oh, not much of one anyway. So it's had its entire rear end. Uh, yeah. oh, dear me. Right, let me see if I can trawl my way through uh, to get back down there and have a look what we've got down there. Uh, but this is uh, this is one heck of a scrapyard that time forgot, especially some of these cars down here. Right, I've just had a word with the owner and he has absolutely confirmed that Escort has been here since 2015 and he reckons that in about 12 months time he's going to let some of them back cars go uh, because that they've been sitting for that long. He's been there nine years and it's still relatively intact. Um, as I say, we've got more doors down here. Um, so the back end of this Fiesta, so I don't know what spec it is, um, but it just, it's just gone. Yeah, it's just gone. It's a shame that, but you know, it makes me willing to uh, keep Ruby on the road for as long as possible. Uh, we've got a few Fiesta. Oh, we've got a Fiesta down here. Yeah, Duratec Sigma. Oh, this this airbox covers the whole engine. It's like they they didn't want to. You don't. They want. They don't want you to see the engine. They made it look like a. You know, they gave it sort of airbox like a sort of industrial uh, cover. Um, because we can't see the engine, we need to make sure the customers don't see the engines. Customers just want to look at a, a bit of a piece of waste of plastic, unlike this. Well, this this airbox has been removed. But again, another Sigma. Um, again, um, ooh, crankcase. Something's uh, something's been missing from there. Sensor. Oh, there's another Mini here. 
So this has been here again uh, quite a long time. See, down here we've got door mirrors, we've got grills. I mean, that's a Cavalier backlight. Uh, let me just tread over this without crushing everything because these bits are just, they've got a Rover grill, Fiat. I mean, what? Oh my goodness me. What BL car did used to have that? I can't remember. Is that a Maxi? I mean, these things have been sitting here. We've got Maestro grill in red. That's off a special. So there's there's quite a few very very rare parts that are just sitting there. If you want any of these parts, you know the place to come to. Um, that's ridiculous. I mean, this is just sitting. Um, but this mini, um, oh, it's a Morris. It says Morris Thousand, but it's a question mark next to it. Um, well, this is no, I don't think it is. No, it's a, it's an eighty, it's an eighties mini. I, I, I'm looking at the headrest. I'm just to stick you in, mini fanatics. What's going on here? Because I see plastic, and that makes me think eighties mini to me. Um, it's not, a, but then I don't know. Um, I don't think there's any identifying factors inside that. And this is how most people with, uh, remember minis. Um, but it has been stripped of a lot of parts, but there's still some parts to go. Um, let me try and get to the back of it. Uh, no, there's just no identifying factors with this car. But the colour is a, it's almost like a sort of gunmetal silver colour. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, next to a Ford Fusion, I'm just trying to get past all this wiring. Obviously, we've got the the depollution side of the of the place, and uh, where cars are depolluted. Obviously, they have to have their tyres removed, fuel needs to be removed. Um, unfortunately, tyres are expensive to dispose of, and uh, it is one thing. And uh, now we're coming into the the dirty part. I should have brought my trainers. Um, so over here we've got engines, uh, engines galore. Goodness me, spot the engine. Right, let's have a go. Fail. Uh, I, I, ooh. Hold on, Rocam. That's a Rocam engine. This is the Rocam engine fitted to KA's um, cheaper version of the Sigma, basically, like I've said before. Um, that looks like a BMW rear wheel drive gearbox. I don't know if it is, no idea. Sigma engine, Rocam engine. Uh, looks like a V, a Jaguar V8, possibly. I don't know. Um, that's a Mazda L series. Um, Duratalk TDCI says it on the cover. I'm cheating. That, oh, I'm not sure. D diesel, diesel engine. I'm not sure why. Uh, VW engine over here. They just sit. These engines are just sitting here. Mercedes. Oh, I, I've lost track. What the heck is that? A Veco. Oh, that, that's huge. Huge diesel engines. I mean, oh, there's a Rover K series right over here. Let me just squeeze over. Yep, Rover K series. An early Rover K series engine. Okay, look, yep. Uh, Sigma engine over there. Um, I mean, I'll tell you what, all these engines, to be honest with you, they were obviously taken off the cars because they worked and I've no doubt they will continue to work. You've got struts here. Now, I'm not one for second-hand struts, but it's a waste of metal. Why not use them? There's a lot of uh, air box hoses over here, gearboxes on this side, IB5s. There's an MTX75 over there. Um, I'm just looking for something. Uh, yeah, nothing uh, vaguely unfamiliar. Um, IB5. This is just, I, I would say, Got some seats here. We've got some random seats that have been taken out of vehicles, but it's not exactly the best place for them. But at the same time, it's you know it's better than nothing. Um, some more Land Rover Land Rover bits in there. Um, too too many engines. So I just hope that people buy this stuff because if people don't buy this stuff, it's just going to go and uh, hey, they've stripped this uh x type for a lot of things but the seats are still there um yeah that's ready to go that is uh, 
Dear me, mate. Excuse me. Let's just squeeze by here. Oh, uh. mm. oh, oh. So it's a, a Renault Panda by the look of it. I oh, know I'm not joking. It is a Renault Panda. Look, because it says Renault there, but it's a frigging Panda. And I think. Oh, yes. <sighs> Is that, a, I don't know if that's a fire engine. I've got a feeling it isn't. It's a pre-fire engine. Um, yeah, pre-fire engine. I uh, mean, it hasn't fired yet. Um, but it's a Panda. I don't know what year it is. I've got a feeling, judging by that registration, it might have been registered in Erdington. Let me just come round it. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah, okay, manual gearbox. It's just stuff full of stuff. Look at that, look at that shirt. Do that again. Oh, blimmin' egg. Yeah, it's the first Renault Panda that I've ever seen in my life. Um, now this is where it gets a bit haphazardous because this is the depollution side. We've got exhausts everywhere. That looks like it's come off a Ford. Now that definitely looks like a Ford bat box. Um, we've got all sorts here, genuine uh, G GM bat boxes and all sorts, really good ones. And uh, most of that will probably survive the weather, um, believe it or not. The reason that they rust is because of condensation on the blimmin' inside, not the outside. Um, and factory exhausts are always really good. This is the, this is the death zone, this is, uh, where they have decided to just strip. I mean, Fiat Bravo and... Uh, rubbish Corsa C uh, twin port um, Mariva which is even worse um, they've got fuel tanks over here now if you need a fuel tank um, you will have quite a bit of choice they've got they'll come with presumably some maybe some straps and your anti-roll-on valves uh, most of them are swimming in water. That's your anti-roll-on valve. You'll have that. Uh, Focus Mark ones have it. Uh, just to, uh, well, they can cause a little bit of um, fuel smell sometimes when they go a bit sticky with age. Um, but the fear, uh, how for a mayo? Um, let me just get down here. I'm going to slip over in a second. This is, yeah, it smells like uh, someone's old house. We've got axles going on galore here, train arm, radius arms, wishbones. Uh, it's a 147 Gito, Gito, uh Renault Megane. Just... Oh. So quiet, it's, I, I'm saying just in my own world at the moment. Uh, BMW 118D. Polo. Um, oh, oh my goodness me, a VW Polo. Mark, Mark II facelift on a J Reg. Oh dear me, let me just try and clear this. Oh god, that bramble is. Yeah, I think that bramble. Is, yeah, I think that bramble is. Ugh, don't know. No, nope, bonnet shut anyway. Uh, but uh, I just come to the back of it. Yeah, interesting. Um, the facelift was looked quite different. Uh, oh, it is the bread van version. Yeah, catalyst. When they advertise that they got a catalytic converter on their cars, oh, that was early nineties. But uh, yeah, fantastic. Now, what I have behind me? Oh, oh my goodness me! It's an R eight. Um, brilliant, and it's a Tourer. Oh my goodness me! K-series intact, no missing parts of this. Um, looks really good to me. I mean, my God, it's it's still holding some fluids in there, you know. Yeah, this is... Does anybody want some... Uh, I think they're Cosmos wheels, I could be wrong. Um, I'm just gonna... I can't even move that out of the way. Okay, laser dashboard. Oh god, I'm just gonna come around the back side. Um, oh, I didn't plan to come here today. I was meant to be reviewing a car, not coming to this place. I mean, look at this. Oh. 
Oh, my goodness me. That's still intact. Can I get that out? <laughs> if somebody wants a vent, I'm just saying it's intact. It's probably the most valuable part left of this car. So sad. 206. And, uh, oh, a Nissan Micro. That's the first Micro that we've seen today on a 51 plate. And, uh, oh, dear. Yeah, sad. Yeah, just, oh, he's just grown and grown and grown. Oh, Nissan Micro over here. Oh, dear me. Oh, my God, there's another 45. Uh, well, it, this is a 45, not an MGZS. Oh, wonderful. I don't know, four plate. So this is a, an early facelift. Oh, this is this is ideal, because this has been down here for some time by the look of it. Um, let me just... I recognise this bumper. It's a Mark 1 front bumper. Oh, a Mark 1 bumper on a 45. How I, how I approve of that. So it's got the cloth interior. Excuse me. I'm just going to hold my breath a bit. Oh, gosh. It's bad. I think some of these cars have definitely been here a bit longer than I... Oh, sad. Just covered in algae. It makes me think of Beatrix when I bought her. It's, well, this is far worse. Oh, God. Oh. Never mind. Passat over here. And, uh, blimey. Oh, Skoda, Volvo, right at the back of all this mess, Volvo V40. You know you've got problems with your scrapyard when your bumpers start disappearing into the hedges. I mean, that looks like a VW camper door over there. I mean, Very similar, but uh, a lot of this is in containers now. Um, I mean, they've got lot of storage everywhere. I mean, <sighs> sad when cars come to this. You think, imagine all these cars would have been, all these cars here would have been at a supermarket car park ten years ago, well, fifteen years ago. Let's say for some of these Astra van, um, got some seats up there. Um, I think I failed to keep registrations out the camera, but it is inevitable. Um, but these are these cars are going, um, and uh, not many of them will return to the road. Oh, we have another escort here before I uh, end up coming to. Well, we've got this section to come here. Um, Reg Vardy, uh, Reg Vardy car. Um, oh, right, okay, he's had a lot taken off it. Another 16 valve um, S Reg. Uh, yeah, it's just rotten. It's rotten. And, uh, yeah, I think there's nothing much left of that. It's just come to the end of its life. And the engine has been removed from this. There's no engine. Um, uh, uh. An Astro that's been butchered for its engine, but it's actually been butchered for its engine only and not the gearbox. Look at that subframe, God, that's gone bad. That's bad. Remarkable, I've only seen one Mark 1 Focus in this scrapyard uh, today. I was expecting to see uh, a couple, but uh, Saab. Um, so that is where I end this lovely and fantastic episode at uh, this fantastic scrapyard and uh, showing cars that time really forgot or haven't quite forgotten, but we don't forget. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Take care, guys. See you very soon. There's one big problem after this video, after I switched off the camera. I was thinking of taking a photo using my phone for a thumbnail. Can't find my phone. It's not in the car. Oh no. I've gone and lost it in that lot down there. Oh no.
absolutely missed a couple of cars. Right behind the focus, you might have been screaming at the camera, well, what's this? MGB rubber bumper. Oh my goodness me, this has been sitting here such a long time. Oh, I've got to get it open. Oh. Well, obviously it opens on the front, but there is a B-series under there. And uh, I've got to say, for an MGB, it's, it's well intact. Um, oh, God. Oh, that's unbelievable. Some good parts on this. Oh, God, there's something left of that. And next to a Porsche 944, of all things... Oh, unbelievable. I've got my phone back. Take care, guys.